Hello everybody, this is Nia Fahler. I'm here with a weekly astrological message for the week between the 8th of July and the 15th of July. <clears throat> so this is where I talk about the celestial energetic soup, astrological soup. We're all swimming in all zodiac signs and are all affected by and the first part is in plain English, no astrologist in it, and then I go to the more astrologic you know aspects as they fall into the next week so first I want to say that still all my readings and and uh, courses private lessons are 30% COVID off and those 30% off are going to go away very soon so if you want to utilize it please do um, we come from a week in which uncertainty has lifted its ugly head and moves that we thought are already pretty certain a future that we thought is quite clear got foggy again question marks rising this is a time that stresses the need for a good social cohesiveness for having a strong support network an intimate support network, a familial support network. This is a time in which the concepts of home, base, family, safe harbor, the sense of belonging, an unequivocal belonging to a family, a clan, a home, a base, rises to the consciousness. And indeed that we understand that all our relationships on all of their in all of their dimensions are being tested and are up for transmutation upgrade and change whether it is the relationships we have with others romantically friendship or with work the partnerships we whether it is the relationship we have with value and money in our lives, what we offer in order to receive. And if that relationship is not stable enough, of course, that affects the last kind of relationship, which is my relationship with myself, my self-esteem. All of these relationships are up to transmutation and change and upgrade. And on the one hand, we want to strengthen our relationships. We want them to stand fast against the coming waves. We want to make sure that they are truthful. That they are strong. That they would withstand the tests of time. And nevertheless, uncertainty, instability, and change are testing them and urging them to upgrade. So some relationships at this time fall and disappear from our lives. We can see people leaving their jobs, we can see people getting jobs, we can see people leaving relationships, people getting into relationships. But those who stay there get strengthened. And indeed, we build a base that is stronger and we could rely on for longer, strategically. Next week, ah, the new moon, new moon, 18th degree of cancer. Again, stresses family, belonging, nurturing. Nurturing oneself, understanding that the way I treat myself is always balanced by the way I treat others and the way they treat me. It's like a triangle that always balances itself. There's a correlation between how I treat myself, how I treat others, and how they treat me, or how I perceive I am treated. And once I start treating myself with more kindness, being that nurturing parent I wish I had, in a sense, you know, and I had a great mother, you know, I still do, I have a great mother, thank goddess. But the parent we all dreamt about, be that parent towards yourself. And that affects how you are towards others and how others towards yourself. 
how others are towards my, ourselves. So, you know, and that new moon stands in trying to Neptune and in opposition to Pluto. And that means that this is a new moon that says, yes, this is a time for mature, for responsible transformation. Walking forward into that transformation, not with you clawing the wall behind you, <laughs> but proudly, with a straight back. And utilizing the imagination, the vision, the spirituality, the belief. Even though I'm only a drop in the ocean, baby, this drop is going to make sure this ocean is as clear and pure as it has ever been. And this drop never forgets. And I'm just a drop, but we all are, and we make up the currents, we make up the waves, we shape the shores of our lives. Hmm. Drop that, and you drop the only meaningful thing we are living for. Because everyone living right now is one heaven of a drop. We're all elite drops, carefully picked. Take this burden that is not solitary, but communal upon our shoulders. And understand that none of us can neglect it. Yes, Georgia, you're correct. You're welcome. Um, anyway. Yeah, Georgia, very interesting. Next week we're coming to a time in which it's it's a great time for traveling. It's a great time to plan ahead. It's a great time for writing, for actually taking from this eternal, spiritual, creative, muse world and bring some of that dreamlike energy and manifest it into reality. It's a very creative time. And it's a time that is preferable for... Um, signing deals or contracts or um, enhancing and widening the people who know you like you know publishing a new campaign or something and also understanding things better and widening your horizons it is a time that brings back joie de vivre the the, the will and the need to squeeze life and enjoy the fact that we are in a body that has five senses. It's a great time for eating and drinking and celebrating and having good sex. But it is also a more childish time, impulsive time, in which we need to be careful not to lash out or, you know, create frictions that are, are truly unnecessary in our relationships. So that's about all I had to say in English. And now for the astrologic aspects of everything. So, Mercury squared Neptune last week. That's the ugly head of uncertainty lifting its head again. And then Venus was squared by Uranus and opposed by Saturn. That's the need for an upgrade and change and validation of all our relationships. On Saturday the 10th, we are having a new moon in Cancer, 18 degree of Cancer, trining Neptune and opposing Pluto. Neptune is the imagination, the understanding that we are a collective and that we have a collective vision. And uh, in Cancer, of course, stresses family, nurturing and belonging. And this is a very patriotic new moon, by the way, um, because the, the, the larger part of the family or the clan is the nation. And then opposing Pluto, the need for transformation in Capricorn, a, a solid, responsible, and adult transformation. Then, through the 11th, you know, we have the moon opposing Saturn. Don't be too judgmental. On the 12th, uh, the moon is conjunct by Venus and Mars. Um, quite a day to enjoy yourselves. Just don't overdo it. Mercury is also trying Jupiter on that day. That's the day to 
sign deals, plan ahead, write, travel, and uh, widen the people who know you or your horizons. And then Tuesday the 13th, Venus, planet of love, Mars, planet of war, conjunct together the female and the male. And this is really a time of enjoying life, enjoying the senses, but also more childish and impulsive, as I've said before. Uh, on the 14th, we have the moon trining Uranus. It's a great day to let the new in. And then on the 15th, uh, the sun trines the moon and uh, I'm sorry, sextiles the moon and trines Neptune. A very, very imaginative, romantic, and a sense that I just want to enjoy the simple things and, you know, quiet and solitude in my life. It's not about city rush. It's about, you know, stepping down from the carousel and listening to the silence and connecting to nature and to the simplicity of creation. And it's a time to connect to the muses, connect to your imagination, connect to your creativity, connect to your spiritual essence, in a sense. And then the 16th, watch out communication-wise, because this is a day of misunderstandings when the moon squares Mercury, planet of communication. Um, and Saturday, sun opposes Pluto. Don't be too dramatic. Don't be too compulsive or total. Take a step back into solid, um, you know, analytic judgment. <laughs> Uh, that's about everything I had to say. Thank you for listening, sharing, and commenting. May we all live long and prosper. This is Nia Filer. Goodbye.